So today, before we get started, I want to mention that the idea of this holder came from Northridge Fix. Alex was repairing something on one of his videos, and he mentioned he would like to have a better way to hold the flux. And it made me think, you know, can we come up with something simple, you know, that someone without a 3D printer or something of that nature handy can still make really quick and hopefully cheaply to hold it. And um, I just thought about using some three quarter PVC pipe because the size is about right. But but before I could actually send this to Alex to see if it would help him, I realized it looked like someone had sent him some 3D printed stuff that may work just as well or better. But later on, I'll show you here in a photo of one of the end of his recent videos. You can see he's starting to use it. He used a small tube, the little short tube because of the 3D printed piece on the back of the syringe. I just thought it was neat that he did find it helpful enough to at least use it. So I do see it on his workbench, so that's kind of cool. And I just want to thank Alex for um, not just once or twice, but at least like three times now, giving Thrifty Toolshed a shout out. Just sending him those markers that we thought may may be helpful for him. He's been very appreciative of them, and um, we really appreciate um, his kindness and his thoughtfulness to include us in his video. I'm going to label the customer's chip with the marker, silver marker, a channel by the name of Thrifty Toolshed. He's the one that mailed us those silver pens. I love him. He mailed the whole package. You can check out his channel at Thrifty Toolshed. So thank you very much, Alex, and hopefully someone else will find this holder helpful as well. So let's get into it. Today I just thought we'd take a look at this very easy to make and relatively inexpensive holder. This works for like Amtec 559 Flux as well as some others and it'll even hold your low melt solder in the tube like so. We can make this several different ways. I'm just using this gray riser pipe. It's a sprinkler riser pipe. So here I'm just going to cut it. Let's just say around one and a quarter. Because I think this one was one and three quarters. And that's about three and a half for the holder tube. Now I'm just using these cheap ratchet cutters. They don't cut straight, but they do cut well. They, I've had them for a long time. It is odd how this pipe is all centered. I'm, I'm used to PVC pipe being pretty tight tolerance. And this riser pipe, I guess they don't, they don't really care. But anyway, it's offset a little bit, but. Might make it cut and dish out a little bit, but it's trying to cup out on me when I cut it. But it does do a quick job. So here, if I just wanted to make this a little bit lower, of course, I just got another option. Like this one's almost flush. If you wanted to do it like that, so. So on this one, we're just using a 45 and a piece of three and a half inch pipe. And we can put our tube in it or a syringe of flux. I'm also going to use my unibit and ring this hole out a little bit, but we'll um we'll do that at the same time as we cut some circles out of this sponge. So back now with the sponge is open and we're going to cut some circles out like we see here. This is a cheap hole punch set. It'll go from 3 sixteenths to an inch and 3 eighths. And here I'm using the 1 8 size or 28 millimeter. I'll have a link to this in the description as well if you're interested, but I'm just going to go cut out some circles and these are going to dry and be a little bit smaller but I'm going to try to tap them in there and then leave just a little bit hanging on so we can tear them off as needed. I just thought I would share this a quick process and relatively cheap way to have your replacement sponges if you need them. And there we go, we can just pull them out. A little bit holding on there and just pull one out if we need to, like so. 
Now we can just take the sponges we have pre-cut and just put them in there and you could just replace them every so often if needed. Yeah, we're also gonna ream this hole out. And you can see this can be mounted on the wall as well if you'd like, so pretty versatile. I'm just gonna use a unibit here to ream the hole out. It just helps, um, for example, here if you're putting it in, right? So a lot of flat area, it just helps when you're taking it in and out a lot, it might help. Just use a deburring tool here to clean it up a little bit. And I think that'll be better. Now, the one thing I had trouble finding locally was the Ys. So a three-quarter Y evidently is hard to find locally. So I did have to find those online. I'll have a link for those in the description if you're interested. I also chose to paint everything that was white with the Rust-Oleum hammered. This is the black. It has a good metallic look to it if interested. And I like the riser pipe because it's already gray. You don't have to paint it and worry about it scratching. Um, I think it'll hold up pretty well. At least that's my thoughts. As I was saying earlier, you know, you can mount this on the wall if it works better for you in front of you, beside you. If you're fortunate enough to have a, a place to mount it at your workbench. And of course, you could also go the cheaper route if you had something close by like a shelf or a way to mount it and just take a piece of pipe, right? A little bit smaller circle and put a cap on it and you can just mount it to a shelf or something like that if you, if you want to at an angle and just have a holder that way. So after we reamed out the pipe, it just looks like this. So you got two different options here. You got the one with the dual tubes and then you got the single. And you could also remove this top part and I just have a short piece of pipe here. And if you just wanted to have one that went straight in, maybe you had some other syringes or maybe you wanted to put your um, low melt solder tube in there. It's more than one way to do it for sure. But I just thought I would share this, see if it helps someone else as well, who may be looking for a way to store their flux and the tubes and maybe even the grinding pin on the workbench. So. If you found this video helpful today, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have links in the description here for a lot of these items. If you're interested, at least you'll be able to see a better description of them, even if you don't buy them from those links. So any link you click on is an affiliate link, and it helps support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.